I'm Brian Christner, and this is The Byte, a bite-sized podcast about containers, cloud, and tech. Welcome back to The Byte. This is episode number 59, and we are going to talk about Home Assistant, the open source home automation suite that puts local control and privacy first. And it's powered by a worldwide community of tinkers and DIY enthusiasts, but uh, it's super powerful. However, it still runs on a Raspberry Pi or a local server, which is really cool. Now in the home automation open source area, I would say there's two major players and the two major players are um, OpenHab and Home Assistant. These are the two major open source home automation suites that are out there at the moment. Uh, I've played around with both quite a long time. I've used Home Assistant in the past and OpenHab I've tinkered with, but I've always kind of uh, gone back to Home Assistant. I I just find it's more of a finished product, has more features, and just overall, it's just, um, it's a good, it's a good uh, overall product. And I find the community is also super active. It's a huge community and, you know, the product is just great. You just look at the website differences and you can already see that Home Assistant is a bit more polished. So what is Home Assistant? Home Assistant is, uh, it's an open source project and it's really focused on privacy first. So that means you control your data, you control your integrations. All the data is stored locally on a Raspberry Pi or wherever you're running it just to keep you in control of what's going on. So it's not running in a cloud, which is a big uh, difference. And that also means if the cloud goes down or your internet goes down, your home automation doesn't stop, which is quite a nice little feature. Um, Stored locally, no cloud involved unless you allow it. So even though you say, hey, we don't want cloud, if you wanna make integrations to Apple HomeKit or Alexa or Google, you can still do it. It's still available. It's just you have the option to make that integration yourself. Um, there's three major use cases from Home Assistant, and that's observe. So basically track the state of all your devices. What's going on? Are they on, off, healthy? What's the temperature? You know, Are lights on? Are people at home or away? These are the observations that Home Assistant is trying to make. The second thing is control. So control is interact with your devices, with your home automation suite via the website UI or a mobile application, which is really cool because it gives you both options and the mobile app is also quite feature rich. And the third thing is automation. So you can set up rules to perform tasks that allows you, for example, when you leave the house, it uh, turns off the heating or turns off the lights or certain times of the day, it dims the lights or raises the lights when you're waking up. Really cool automation features. It's quite, uh, like I said, very feature rich. The founders created a vision statement back in 2016, and it's been around longer than that, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But um, on their blog, they have like the perfect home automation uh, blog post, and uh, the link will be in the show notes. But what it really, uh, uh, what it really tells you is is basically, you know, home automation, there's no perfect app. And you know what, I've done IoT talk before and I, I covered this topic in depth and I basically said, you know, IoT is trying to replace the light switch. You know, you turn the light on and off and but you're trying to compare it with an application where you have to go onto the app, you have to open the app, you have to connect to the device and user experience doesn't match, right? So, I mean, the app takes maybe 30 seconds to turn on a light, where if you go over, walk over to a light switch and turn it on, it's instant. And that's what they're trying to say. The, the There is no perfect app that for automation. And home automation should uh, blend into your current workflow, not replace it. And that's a key takeaway because what we're trying to achieve here is, you know, we're trying to automate. We're not trying to replace uh, switches and things like this. We're really trying to achieve things that uh, your home is being smarter through automation. So when I go away, things are happening by itself. I don't have to trigger these events. Or, you know, when I walk into a room, the lights come on. For example, I don't have to interact with the lights. That's where we're trying to aim towards. That's what true IOT home automation should be aiming towards. 
And the second thing is they're really adamant is home automation should run at home and it shouldn't run in the cloud. And I, I can see both ways. I mean, I'm a cloud advocate. I really love the cloud, but at the same time, home automation, your personal data and your home, you know, why should we go out to the cloud? It, it's local, it's all the data's here. And the other use case is if the internet goes down or the cloud provider goes down, your home automation stops. Whereas if you're running the server locally, it's always gonna run. Even if the, the internet goes out or the cloud provider, you can still turn your lights on and off, which is sort of an advantage if you ask me. Uh, additionally, there's uh, community cookbooks where it's basically automation examples that the community has put together. For example, you know, turning lights off, dimming lights, what happens when you go away from your house, uh, what events happen. Uh, it, there's a lot of different uh, community contributions, which is quite cool. So you don't have to start from scratch making some of these automation rules. So that's just what is home automation, uh, the home assistant. But now let's kind of take a look around the UI. And I have actually have a new tool that I'm playing around with if you're watching YouTube. And there you go. You can see now here is Home Assistant. And what we see here is the website. So you can see the application up here. And this is home-assistant.io. And you scroll down and you can see you can use Alexa to turn on the lights. You use Alexa to control Home Assistant. You can use OK Google to turn on the AC, for example, the air conditioning. And it has, you know, a little bit their mission statement, their integrations and different things. So we're going to scroll up into the getting started page. And it's really focused on um, getting started with a Raspberry Pi. So they want you to use a Raspberry Pi as the the device to control your home, which I, I kind of agree with because, you know, it's super lightweight. Uh, the Raspberry Pi is perfect for this because you can just stick it in a closet somewhere and forget about it. And then it's on your network and it connects to all your devices. So it walks you through how to, you know, format the Raspberry Pi card, install the home assistant operating system and application and basically get up and running. You can also see some of the integrations. So the integrations you can see on the home page here, Google Cast, IFTT, IKEA, Philips Hue. I mean, there's over a thousand different integrations, actually 1500 uh, plus it says. So you can see there's a lot of different things you can connect to, which is awesome. And I am gonna just fire up my terminal because I have it running here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start uh, a Docker container and run it locally on my Mac just so you can see quickly how easy it is to get up and running with Home Assistant. So we go Docker run and we name the container Home Assistant. We give it the time zone Europe Zurich because that's where I am. I give it the present working directory to store the configurations. I'm going to publish port 8123 so I can access it and then I'm going to use this image. So go ahead and run. Oops. And I already have this home assistant container there. So let me just clear it out. And I just want to show people at home that, hey, there's nothing in this directory. So let me run it again. There you go. That's how real the demo is. It doesn't work the first time around. Docker PS to check it's running. It is running. And if I just go to this port here and go to my browser now, you can then see Yes, I have Home Assistant running. So my name is Brian and my username is going to be Brian and my password is going to be Brian1234, Brian1234. Don't save this because it's top secret. Okay, <clears throat> now we are in. So now we start jumping into the configuration of Home Assistant and it asks you the name of your home. So, you know, maybe you have a primary home, a secondary home, and you can also detect uh, external services. You see it jumps right away when I click detect. It detects the location on the map where my house is. Um, I need to give it the, how high my house is. So it's 450 meters. Don't ask me to change that to Imperial. It doesn't do the conversion, but that's fine. And I go next and now here if I was using a Raspberry Pi and it was connected directly to my network, I would see devices already pop up on this screen. And this would show you, for example, in my house, I have the Philips Hue, I have uh, Sonos, 
I have, you know, Alexa. I have a few devices that should just come right up here. But since I'm running a Docker container, and I'm not mapping correctly to the network. It probably doesn't show everything properly, but there you go. I click finish and I am now up and running with Home Assistant. And you can see today is actually sunny, which is nice for once. Um, username, Brian. And then if I just move my face out of the way, I can go down to configuration. And then there's integrations. And I can say, hey, I want to, I want to stay logged in. I want to add a configuration and I'm going to add my printer, for example, brother. It looks for the for the printer name or host IP address, which I don't have it off the top of my head. So let's find another device. Um, but you can see quickly how easy it is. I just choose a device and I can easily get up and running. I can go HomeKit maybe. I don't think it'll work because what's happening is since it's running in a Docker container, I'm not really on my no real network. So I can't see to these devices, but you can see it's very simple. You just go, uh, plus the integration and then what you want to connect and then you can be up and running quite quickly. Um, the Roomba, different things you can connect to. Now you can do it through the UI or you can also codify it so it's written in YAML and you could just define all your devices in YAML so if you can have it all all prepared ahead of time so if you ever lose your config uh your device you can easily jump in and out and deploy a new device and be up and running in no time if we take a look around the ui you can see the overview this is where we'd see all the devices you can see the map so there i am and possibly if i had it connected to my my cell phone you could see me on the map being away from the home so that's kind of cool you can also see logbook entrance entries like who's done what the history so you know here's uh the actual the weather that's happening at the time so i can actually control when the lights go on and off based on the location of my house so it knows you know the sun's going to rise at this time it's going to set at this time and i can accordingly set the the lights of my house to to play around with that as well so you can see there's tons of tons of configurations you can really do a lot i I'm a huge fan. I mean, you can see how easy it is to set up. I mean, there's one command I had it up and running. On Raspberry Pi, it takes a little bit more effort because you have to format the Raspberry Pi uh, SD card. You have to install it, put it on your network, and then configure it. But even then, it's an easy. Uh, it's quite easy to get up and running. Would I recommend Home Assistant? Absolutely, because I'm actually using it. So I, I, I really like it. I have no ties to the company at all. It's really just something I like. Um, I like doing home automation. And now I'm really working on the rules part of it. So I would be interested if you're doing any type of home automation. And if so, if you're using Home Assistant, I would be interested to find out. So that is all for this episode. Thank you very much. Uh, we will see you next time. Have a great weekend and bye-bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Byte. You can find the show notes at thebyte.io and follow me on Twitter at I Do My Own Tricks.